Hello everyone, I'm Emily Rubin, I'm one of the founders and I'm the CEO of Duchenne UK and I'm really delighted and a bit emotional uh, today to be joined by Professor Dame Kay Davis. Um, Kay is one of the global leaders of Duchenne Muscle Dystrophy Research and I, I met you, Kay, I think it was literally a couple of weeks after my son was diagnosed and you gave me so much hope. I remember you saying that there is light at the end of the tunnel. Um, how do you think we are today compared to a decade ago in terms of potential treatments for, for Duchenne? I think we're a long way ahead now. And the reason is, first of all, industry's got involved. They now realize there's a, it's rather crude, but they've got, there's a business case to producing a treatment for DMD. There's lots of take up with the biotechs and, that's, and lots of innovation within academia. So I think there's real hope now that something dramatic will happen in the next five years, probably. Well, that's really encouraging to hear that, Kay. And a lot of our supporters are families of children with, with Duchenne muscle dystrophy. And obviously that time of diagnosis is unbelievably distressing. Um, how do you think the landscape looks for those young children who are diagnosed today? I think there's lots of hope. And I don't mean there will be a cure. But um, the gene therapy, as we've heard now, is not uh, perfect by any means. But each time we do a new trial, we learn. And that learning process allows more people to come into the field, innovate, and move it forward. So again, I would say in the next two to five years, there's lots of hope for those children that are currently being diagnosed. I, I would say that you and I have lived through many false dawns. We've seen, sadly, more clinical trials fail um, than have succeeded. Um, but there is so much more we now understand about Duchenne, which is helping us to, to, to design better clinical trials. What do you think about the sort of older boys? You know, my, my son Eli now is, is no longer walking. Um, I still have hope for him and for treatments. Do you think there are still uh, potentials for those boys to benefit? Um, yes, because particularly if they haven't used, if they haven't, if they haven't lost uh, use of their arms, it could make a huge difference to the quality of their lives and of course it will protect their hearts. So if we look again at that two to f five year time frame, there is time for them to get some th therapy that might slow the progression of the disease and actually help them maintain the mobility they've currently got. Um, how important do you think it is uh, for companies and academics developing treatments for Duchenne to listen to listen to the patient voice and really understand um, their experience of the disease. How helpful do you think Duchenne UK has been in helping to guide research in that way? Well, two things. First, you provide the drive. You uh, interact with the government um, so we can design the trials better. And I think that aspect is getting uh, more sensitive. We need to understand what the patient experience is. We need to understand what's really important and particularly uh, like Eli's case, what's important to him that we need to treat? Is it the movement in his arms or is it something else? Uh, I think that's really vitally important and those are things we need to monitor in the clinical trials. Kay, thank you so much for talking to us today and uh, it's really been an honour to know you all these years and uh, long may it continue. Well, thank you so much. we have to get a treatment before I retire and I haven't retired <laughs> yet, so yes. <laughs> Good, well that gives us something to aim for. Thank you so much for watching. If there's any information you want about the things we've discussed, then do go to our website, duchenneuk.org.